This is going to be a basic color grading tutorial using DaVinci Resolve Lite and we're going to be creating a kind of a basic grade uh, which we'll then be able to export as a 3D lookup table and use on the DP7 Pro. So you'll be able to use the grade or the look that you've created on the DP7 Pro live while you're shooting. So uh, for this example I've I'm just going to be using some clips that I shot with my Sony F35 in S-Log Gamma. And uh, I'm just going to throw in a few clips into my master media pool down here. Um, it does matter uh, what camera you're going to be grading your, your look on because each gamma is created very differently, typically. Um, Rec. 709 gammas are, are pretty consistent a lot of the time, but as far as uh, the log gammas go, which are the ones that you're generally going to be wanting to create looks for, um, they, they're all pretty inconsistent with each other. And that's fine, but you just have to make sure that you know, you're grading on whichever footage that you're going to be shooting with later, if that makes any sense. Um, so I switched over to the edit tab now and um, the first thing I'm going to do and this is kind of a, a specific scenario for me is the, these clips were shot in ProRes onto a HyperDeck shuttle at uh, ProRes 422HQ and by default um, some programs such as DaVinci will by default read only a uh, limited portion of the uh, gamma range and uh, we want to make sure it uses the full range so I'm going to highlight all of these right click right click them and say clip attributes and under here it says levels auto I want to switch that to data levels because um, right now for some reason auto is going to be using video levels uh, 64 to 960 whereas I want the data levels which is 0 to 1023 um, so otherwise, you know, it's going to cut off shadows below 64 and highlights above 960. Uh, you don't want to do that or else you're going to be losing the data in those files. So just, uh, yeah, make sure you do that if you're shooting in ProRes. I think DNX HD and, and other formats are fine, obviously, like DPX and things like that. You're going to be you're going to be fine as far as this goes. But ProRes, for some reason or another, just defaults to do that. So, yeah, just make sure to do that. And uh, so I'm going to go now and right click in the timelines area to just make sure I can throw the clips into a timeline, say create new timeline. Um, I want to uncheck empty timeline and then just say create new timeline. Now that I'll just automatically put whatever clips I have in my master pool here into the timeline. So now I can switch over to the color tab. So for the sake of this example, I'm just going to go for kind of a film emulation look uh, that's, you know, pretty strong contrast and, um, yeah, it just has nice saturated colors, things like that. Hopefully just have it be relatively balanced just so it would be uh, somewhat versatile uh, when added to the DP7 Pro to use live. So um, how I'm going to do that is by applying a film print emulation let which uh, those come with DaVinci Resolve now. Um, first I'm gonna add a new node. Uh, this is just like my standard node which I can I can start color grading this immediately if I want to and it applies it to this particular node. Uh, but I want to do what I want to do is create a separate one and I add a serial node which is basically your your standard node. Um, and I'm going to drag this all the way over to the right. Uh, you don't have to do that, but basically I, I want this to be the very last node in the chain. Um, and the reason that is, is when you add something like a film print emulation lookup table, uh, that limits the color space and that makes it to where anything that happens before it goes through that, that color space, essentially like a filter. Uh, so you want you want that color like whatever manipulations you you apply beforehand however crazy they are you want that color to be limited if if you're going for a film print sort of look so um, I'll show you 
uh, how to get there. If you right click on the node, go down to 3D LUT, and in the latest version of DaVinci Resolve, they've added this film looks uh, area. I, I think this is uh, version 10 of DaVinci. So go down to film looks and you can pick any one of these and do experiment. Um, I'm just going to pick the one at the very bottom, Kodak 2383D65, which is uh, sort of a daylight balanced uh, Kodak stock. So I'm going to click that and you can see immediately the uh, picture is a lot more kind of contrasty. And um, and the, the saturation is still relatively low, but we'll, we'll get that fixed up. Um, so since I am kind of going for, you know, a relatively contrasty look, it's, it's looking pretty decent. Um, but what I'm going to apply to it is some saturation. It's still, uh, the saturation is, is down a bit. And so what I'm going to do is go back to my first node in the chain here and double click that. And now whatever manipulations I do is just going to affect this node and not this one here. So, um, I'm going to add some saturation right here. I'm just going to just drag that straight up and you can see things starting to become, you know, quite vivid. Um, and right now it's feeling maybe like the, the sunspots and the grass spots are a, a bit too warm maybe. Uh, so I can drag this away on the gain. I'm going to drag this towards blue and you'll see things start to kind of move around a bit. See, I've gone a bit too far and now I'm losing all of that, that orange. So I want to sort of balance it out. So I'm keeping those the buildings kind of these two buildings on the the blue side of things, but the sun is still still got some warmth to it. So that's looking pretty good. One thing that I do kind of have a problem with with Da Vinci. I'm not sure if um, it's warranted or not, but it seems like the the color wheels um, could use some I don't know more fine tuning. You you really have to be very very subtle with these things or else it can very quickly get out of hand i mean you can see this one in particular is hardly even moved off of the center the, even visibly but it's it's enough for it and you'll see if i do uh command d to disable the node um, you can see it switching on and off right now you know it's a pretty pretty significant change obviously there's a satur some saturation added in too but the blue of the buildings is you know is probably the the main part and that and that's literally just that little adjustment there did that so i kind of wish these things were not so uh coarse in their adjustment it would make it a little bit easier to uh be able to do those fine tune adjustments but anyway um so i've got that i mean it's actually looking pretty cool so i may just kind of scroll around a little bit just to see sort of what's going on if there's anything that i'm not happy with the look with i do think it probably is a bit too much contrast so um, I'm gonna bring up the black levels a little bit and I will show you how to do that uh, so yeah this tree is looking kind of pretty pretty dark over here so I'm gonna brighten that up um, I could use the lift gamma gain uh, just drag these little dials right here if I drag this to the right you'll see it'll start to lift up the shadows um, but and that and that looks good but I can achieve a similar thing with the curves, and I, I'm going to undo that. Um, there we go. Uh, and with the curves, I, I do tend to prefer these for those kind of adjustments sometimes because of it's a it's a bit more controllable. Uh, and I'll show you what I would do there. Um, so you can see, essentially, this is the. This curve represents the light and dark of the image. Uh, from the left-hand side of, of this curves window, this is representing the darks, and this is representing the brights over here. So, for instance, if I wanted to brighten the shadows, um, I could click here and start dragging up, and notice in the image anything that's sort of in shadow becomes brighter. And over here, if I want to take down any of the highlights, I could do that. Um, Essentially what this film print emulation look is doing right now is actually applying a curve that's kind of like this, that's doing the opposite of what I'm doing. So it's, it's brightening the highlights and it's darkening the shadows uh, and increasing the contrast in practice. So uh, I'm just going to do a little bit of a reversal of that uh, just to sort of even it out a little bit. And so 
that's looking pretty cool actually i like the way that it's sort of bringing bringing the highlights in a little bit more and you're seeing a bit more of the color of the sky as opposed to it just being bright white um, and you can see right now all of the color channels including luminance are ganged together and if you want to manipulate them individually you can do that by clicking this the three dots right here and uncheck gang custom curves and now and I like just clicking this button here to just make things bigger to be more fine-tuned but now when I manipulate one of these it's only going to manipulate the green channel and so you can see now the sky is looking crazy and stuff because I'm I'm just manipulating one channel but you can get a lot of cool looks uh, by doing that and unganging the curves and uh, you know you can you can make the shadows be one color and the highlights be another and of course you you know you can do those similar kinds of things over here with the color wheels and it just depends on the scenario when one is more important than the other so uh, just experiment uh, I pretty much have to experiment with every single new project that comes in it seems like uh, every, every time you you load in a new clip it's kind of a, a new challenge but I think that's what makes it so enjoyable too so uh, this is a pretty vivid look so I think this will be uh, good to show on the DP7 so I think um, we'll roll with it I'm gonna uh, look over these other clips first and basically to inherit the the grade of another clip um, if I this is the clip here that I want to uh, inherit the look from so I'm gonna select this one and middle click on this one and then it will grab the look from um, the clip that you, that you middle clicked and so now I can sort of scroll through and make sure it looks okay looks good so uh, you can also quickly enable or disable uh, the look if you press command shift D or control shift D on uh, Windows that will enable and disable all nodes if you want to just enable or disable a single node you can just do command D or control D so all right that's looking pretty good I'm gonna check the last one by clicking here middle clicking the clip to the left inherit the look it's looking pretty cool I like the way that the sky looks a little bit uh, I don't know, kind of overly sort of a blue cast it's kind of neat I guess so um, all right so what I'm gonna do to export this look now as a 3d lookup table uh, just right click it and say generate 3d LUT and you can do that from whatever look you've got applied to whichever of these clips uh, just make sure you've got the right one if, if you have different looks applied so uh, just click generate 3d LUT and I've got a SD card in my computer right now that I call DP7 and I can just plop the look right into here or I can create a folder structure uh, I generally prefer to create a folder structure um, just because I can keep my my looks a lot more organized uh, depending on how many you have I've sort of been collecting more and more so it can uh, start to get out of hand if you don't don't start collecting them together so one thing I like to do is is uh, organize them by camera since every camera you're gonna generally want a, a different look for um, just since the color profiles are, are gonna be so different so I'm gonna create a new folder and call this one F35 there we go and create and I'm just gonna call this sort of blue highlights film print and save that one thing I forgot to mention was the uh, the type of file that your lookup table will be uh, in DaVinci Resolve it'll be a dot cube file um, and it has kind of this crazy naming scheme to it I guess I've got the name of my clip and then a three for whatever reason I'm not sure what that's for but you can just delete anything you don't want uh, to be in the file name and uh, sort of truncate it if you like uh, but different uh, different color grading software will produce different kinds of 3d lookup table files uh, but you can use any of those files uh, we've created the dp7 to be able to accommodate all of those different file types so you don't have to be looking for a converter software to make those those work so um, yeah I'm just gonna go ahead and eject the dp7 
uh, card and put the SD card into the DP7. So before I insert the SD card, I'm going to scroll over to the looks menu just so you can see how it changes when I do put the SD card in. So I'll go ahead and do that now. And you'll see the root and F35 directories show up. The root directory will contain anything that you, any looks that you put onto the SD card that don't have a folder. Um, and obviously I created the F35 folder and so that's where my uh, new lookup table is gonna be. So I'll go there and from here you can just click to enable the look and you can see it working and I can just click again to disable it. Um, but the most useful way to use these lookup tables is by assigning them to smart keys which allows you to uh, switch between different ones very easily. And how I do that is by going down to the assign new smart key button and clicking that. And now I can scroll my uh, wheel in left or right to be able to see the different pages of smart keys that I'm allowed to assign to. And I can uh, just go ahead and assign one. And now I've got that look mapped to my smart key that I'm able to enable and disable very easily. And you can see it's got even the little name of the folder there for F35, uh, which is another reason why uh, creating folder structures is a very handy thing because uh, you're able to actually see that when it's assigned to the smart key. But uh, from here, I can assign this entire page with different looks if I want to be able to just quickly switch through them, which is uh, just very beneficial on set to be able to, to get a nice um, approximation of what your your final look could be um, just by sort of getting new ideas and and sort of inspiring a bit of creativity so so I hope that's helped you out um, like I said don't take any of this as gospel this is just kind of how I um, you know I do color grading but there are a lot more talented color graders out there and um, you know learn from the best if you can but uh, yeah that's how to get it working with the DP7 Pro and to be able to view these looks live as you shoot.